Hi and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to discuss Trestolin or um, well, uh, uh, as it's scientifically you known, 7-alpha-methyl-19-nortestosterone aka MENT and we're going to compare it to testosterone just because um, there tends to be the shift in thinking that um, TRT doesn't have to be limited to testosterone, that trestolone also can be um, used in a similar context because it maintains sexual function, etc. So as stated in the name, it is a 19 nor testosterone, so it is grouped into um, uh, the same group as trembolone and nandrolone. Um, however, it doesn't seem to be um, well, okay, uh, so when uh, comparing the two, um, testosterone and uh, trestolone, it appears quite evidently that trestolone is a lot more powerful and myotropic than testosterone is, and that's because you can maintain, well, uh, an anabolic, you can essentially make someone anabolic at a lot lower dose and maintain sexual function at a lower dose, such as like 400 to 700 micrograms per, I'm not sure if it's per week or, oh, per day. So um, essentially it would come out to about 4.9 milligrams a week, whereas um, in testosterone replacement therapy, you're looking at 100 milligrams, and this is significantly less, yet sexual function is maintained. So um, another positive is that it's not thought to be um, reduced by 5-alpha reductase into DHT, thus possibly sparing the hair, uh, hair but more importantly the prostate, because um, testosterone isn't specific in that capacity whereas ment could possibly be um, um, uh, could possibly be a new selective agent which is why it's um, try, uh, which is why people are try, uh, have experimented with it being used over testosterone um, so uh, this concept of using ment as instead of testosterone isn't really research it's more Mint is more researched in the terms of it being, uh, looking at its characteristics. So, um, and there aren't many studies where it draws comparisons to uh, testosterone. However, we can try and make our own conclusions or conjectures. Um, so, it does appear that um, Trestolone is selective in that um, it doesn't reduce to DHT and does in fact have a sparing capacity for the prostate because there's in a study where they looked at um, males given a pellet which was uh, which was secrete uh, which was producing about a, 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 a trestolone each day um, they looked at the prostate size, PSA, or prostate specific antig antigen, and they found that those weren't impacted, and in some they were decreased, however not significantly. Um, so it does show a bit of evidence for selectivity. Addition, in addition, I have found a few, I, I enjoy going onto forums, and I see people uh, claiming it isn't it doesn't cause erythrocytosis like testosterone does. However, in we don't have many clinical trials, and they're all fairly they all have fairly low sample sizes. However, in this trial that was conducted in two thousand and three, they put a one to four transplants or implants, sorry, in groups, and they looked at a lot of health markers that a bodybuilder would commonly you uh, look at when on cycle and they found that hemoglobin and hematocrit did increase in a dose dependent manner uh, which is expected with androgens 
um, just because they uh, cause greater androgen re uh, receptor gene transcription or something like that. So, um, so that um, the hi but none of them increased to a point where it was problematic. But again, this is much lower than. Well, this is replacement levels. So it would be if you were, let's say, using a lot higher dose for bodybuilding or performance enhancing purposes, it would probably be more significantly elevated. And it isn't selective in that manner. However, the prostate, there is evidence to suggest that's fine in terms of cholesterol, HDL, LDL, all of those values. Um, it didn't appear to influence it greatly. Um, um, so, uh, so uh, yeah, there were no remarkable changes seen in serum lipid levels during treatment. However, this is, again is a low dose, but that's interesting considering that testosterone is known to decrease HDL and when they specifically notice a transient decrease in HDL, however, that corrected over time, just as well as the liver values. But that is also seen in TRT, especially with the liver. Um, HDL tends to be suppressed on TRT though, uh, which is quite interesting. So um, in terms of it being suppressive, it is highly suppressive. Um, and in a dose-dependent manner also, uh, they looked at FSH and LH values and um, as well as testosterone. Testosterone did decrease, and that's another thought that goes behind the whole it doesn't cause erythrocytosis because testosterone is responsible for that. But I think trestolone also does influence that. Um, so testosterone levels did decrease, FSH and LH also decreased quite significantly. And in terms of it, uh, 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 in terms of um, it causing azospermia or secession of sperm production, there's about 100% in months uh, 6 to 12 on Trestolone. Um, so, it's, so another complaint is the fact that it is, uh, a lot of people complain about it converting to estrogen. Uh, quite rapidly and whilst that is true and that's why it can be well I wouldn't say rapidly but uh, uh, the reason it is used for TRT replacement is that it can also replace your estrogen levels unlike most other androgens such as nandrolone uh, when that is uh, when that was looked at in, uh, in terms of possible hormone replacement therapy that doesn't convert to estrogen. And the thing with um, trestolone is it does convert to 7-alpha-methyl estradiol, which is thought, I don't know where this thought came about, but it's thought to be more potent than estrogen and influence the receptor. Possibly that may have come from the anabolic book by Dr. William, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but in fact studies show it's equipotent to estrogen. Um, at the uh, 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 in, at the estrogen receptor, so estrogen management isn't that difficult. In fact, uh, when using um, there, this wasn't really looked at in the studies. This is more anecdotal. When you going on mint replacement therapy, estrogen levels tend to be low, but that isn't surprising because. Um, you have lower testosterone levels, lower uh, aromatization to estradiol, and that 7-alpha-methyl uh, estradiol isn't picked up on blood assays. Um, or, um, so, um, so estrogen management, uh, there do, uh, uh, most uh, claim not to need um, an aromatase inhibitor. Um, especially if used at a reasonable dose, uh, if it's used at um, more performance enhancing doses, then you may have to. You'd have to specifically, though, request to see your 7-alpha-methyl 
estradiol levels as opposed to estradiol levels. But it's also recommended. But, um, yeah. Um, in terms of other studies, they did find it is neuroprotective. It was, um, it does have myelin repair and chronic demyelination, such as like multiple sclerosis, those kinds of conditions. But otherwise, there aren't many studies and the sample sizes are all quite small. So I'm just interested to see how this drug um, does in the future and whether or not it can replace testosterone as replacement therapy because it tends to be, it does seem to have a safety profile much higher th than that of testosterone. The, um, when using testosterone replacement doses, uh, in terms of performance enhancing doses, there aren't studies on that and that could, and, the, uh, and, um, so uh, that doesn't necessarily indicate it's quite, it's safe for blasting and cruising. Um, however, um, so I'm not suggesting you use this. I just wanted to present evidence and see where this trestolone goes in the future and whether or not it is used for replacement purposes or as a contraceptive method. As we've seen, it is very suppressive and does halt sperm production quite well. So, um, yes, it's uh, definitely worth considering if you are someone who struggles with issues such as uh, uh, such as prostate issues um, and want something more selective than that of testosterone. However, again, studies are limited, but it does seem promising in that realm. But um, thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed and like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.